Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about infinite series. And uh, I want to start with this definition that I have written here, and that is that an infinite series is the sum of an infinite sequence of numbers. So we just talked about sequences and what they are. And remember that a sequence is just a list, an ordered list of numbers, okay? So uh, A1, A2, A3, A4 might be a sequence of numbers. The difference between a sequence of numbers and a series of numbers is in a series, we're adding all of those numbers together. So we're adding A1 plus A2 plus A3 and so on. And sometimes uh, if we're writing a summation of a bunch of things like this, we might write that this is the sum k going from 1 to n of a sub k. Okay, so this is kind of the shorthand version uh, of this infinite sequence uh, of numbers added together, which we call an infinite series. So this is our summation notation. Now, there's a little bit of a problem here, and I want to take one minute to talk about it, and that is, if you're adding up infinitely many numbers, is that even okay? Can we add up infinitely many numbers? Uh, we know we can add two numbers, and we know we can add three numbers, because we can add two of them and then add the third, but can we add infinitely many numbers? Wouldn't it, in some sense, take infinite time to do so? Uh, or is it even legal at all? And uh, the answer to that question is uh, a little bit tricky, but at the end of the day, we can't add up infinite numbers, okay? We just, uh, we can add up finite numbers. And so what we're going to do, since we can't technically add up an infinite number of things, is we're going to add up a finite number of things and then let that finite number go toward infinity and see if there's a limit. So the way we're going to do that is the following. I'm going to define this thing right now. It, it, I'm going to write it S sub n. And what S sub n is going to be, it's going to be the sum of the first n of the series, the first n terms. So a3, a4, and so on, until I get to the nth one. Okay, so S sub n is the sum of the first n of them. Not infinitely many, like I want, but just the first n. So if I wanted to talk about S sub 1, it's just the first one. If I want to talk about S sub 2, it's the sum of the first one and the second one. If I want to talk about S3, it's the sum of the first and the second term and the third term of the sequence, and so on. Okay, so that's what I mean by S sub n. And uh, just as a definition here, let me write down a definition. Uh, and that is that S sub n is called the nth partial sum of the series. Okay, the nth partial sum. All right. Um, so, the way that I find um, the actual sum is I'm going to do the following. If I want to find the sum k going from 1 to, let's say, infinity, let's call it, of a sub k, uh, which if I were to write this out, so to speak, I'd write a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus and so on forever. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the limit um, as n goes to infinity of s sub n. In other words, I'm going to figure out what is this nth partial sum, and then I'm going to take the limit of the nth partial sum 
as n goes to infinity. So I never actually am adding up an infinite number of things. I'm just adding up a very, very large number of things and seeing if it gets close to something. Okay, um, so now let's talk about a very special type of infinite series and we're going to start out with what's called a geometric series okay so let's start with a definition um, <clears throat> so a, a geometric series looks sort of like this it looks like a plus a times r plus a times r squared plus a times r cubed, and you get the idea, plus a times r to the fourth, plus, and so on, forever. So let's say that I wanted to figure out uh, what this geometric series actually adds up to. Okay, The way that I figure out what a series adds up to is I find the nth partial sum, and then I take the limit as n goes to infinity of that nth partial sum. So I want to know what's the nth partial sum of this guy. So I'm going to write down Sn and the nth one of these is A. That's the first one plus AR. That's the second one plus AR squared. That's the third and I want to go up to the nth which would be A to the R to the n minus 1 power. Yeah, that's the nth. And if you count them, you'll find that that's the first n of them, so to speak. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to do something kind of clever because that's not super helpful in its current form. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by r. So if I took r times s sub n, then I get uh, ar plus ar squared plus a r cubed plus and so on this is a little plus plus a r to the n okay now I'm going to take that second equation and subtract it from the first equation okay so take one of these and subtract it from the other so I get s sub n minus r times s sub n is equal to, and now something very nice happens. On the top, I have an a times r. On the bottom, I have an a times r. So if I'm subtracting the second equation from the first, those cancel. And the a r squareds cancel. And the a r cubes cancel. What will be the very last thing that will cancel is the a r to the n minus ones will cancel. And all that will be left is from the top equation, I get an a. And from the bottom equation, I get minus a r to the n. All right. Now, I'm going to factor out an s sub n over here on the left, and I'll get 1 minus r. And that's equal to a minus <coughs> um, a r to the n. Divide both sides by 1 minus r, and I get s sub n is equal to a minus a uh, oops okay minus a r to the n uh, divided by 1 minus r and this is a very nice form for my nth partial sum so I have s n in a very nice form to take the limit as n goes to infinity so now if I actually want to figure out what this geometric series converges to, then what I need to do is take the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth partial sum, which is a minus a r to the n divided by 1 minus r. So what does happen as n goes to infinity? Well, it really depends on r. If r is less than 1, or the absolute value of r, think about this for a second, if the absolute value of r is less than 1, what happens to something that's less than 1 or absolute value is less than 1 as you raise it to a very, very large power? 
it gets very, very small. Think of like a half, and a half raised squared is a fourth, cubed is an eighth, to the fourth is a sixteenth, so it's getting very small. It's going to zero. So if the absolute value of r is less than one, then this limit goes to uh, this thing would just be zero, and I get a over one minus r if the absolute value of r is less than one. Well, what happens if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to one? Well, then it's not so nice. Okay, uh, then it diverges. Okay, so it there is no sum if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. But if it's less than 1, it does sum up. And it even better than that, it sums up to a over 1 minus r. OK, that's very helpful. Um, so let me write down a definition for you really quick. So this is very important. This is all on geometric series. and this is like the most basic type of series there is and we need to understand how they work so geometric series are very nice they're easy to recognize and it's easy to sum up okay let me um, now write a um, another definition for you uh, that we need to know and that is the following definition if uh, we have the sum k going from 1 to infinity of a sub k. Uh, in other words, I take the nth partial sum, I take the limit as n goes to infinity, and I get a nice number l. Then we say the series converges. If not, the series diverges. So we can talk about a series being convergent. In other words, it adds up to some nice number. Or we can talk about a series, series being divergent, meaning that it does not add up to some nice number. Um, so geometric series would be a very nice example. Like let's take a very simple geometric series in this case. Let's say we have something like the sum k going from 1 to infinity uh, of <clears throat> um, 1 over 5 to the k. All right. If we wrote out a few terms here, the first term would be a fifth. The second would be 1 25th. The third would be 1 over 1 25, and so on. And right off the bat, I see, yeah, this is nice and geometric because it has some number that I multiply by every time to get the next guy. And what is that number? That's what we call r. r is the number that I multiply by every time to get the next guy. And in this case, r is 1 fifth. Also, I need to know what a is. a is always just the first number. And in this case, a is 1 fifth. So if I want to know what this geometric series adds up to, it adds up to a over 1 minus r. What's a? It's 1 fifth. What's r? It's also 1 fifth. So I get 1 minus 1 fifth, or 1 fifth divided by uh, what? 4 fifths. What's 1 fifth divided by 4 fifths? That's otherwise known as 1 fourth. So this whole thing adds up to 1 fourth. Okay, so geometric series are very nice, so we would say that this converges, um, and it converges to a fourth. Okay, uh, 
Geometric series are great because we can actually figure out what they converge to. That isn't always the case. Some things we can figure out what they converge to, some things we can't, uh, and some things uh, diverge. So this is kind of the basics of infinite series and how we work with them is we say, okay, can I find an nth partial sum? Once I find that nth partial sum, can I take the limit as n goes to infinity? of that nth partial sum. If you can, and it's a nice number, it converges. If you can't, it diverges. And that's where we're at so far. Now let's look at some examples to see how this kind of plays out.